please welcome New York Times best-selling author, actor, and activist, Busy Phillips, reproductive rights advocate, Phoebe Gates, and United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Right to Health, Dr. Tialang Mufukeng. I'm Busy Phillips. Hi, I'm Busy Phillips, and I'm a global citizen. So listen, when I was 15 years old, I had an abortion. And this isn't the first time that I've talked about this publicly. It's not going to be the last, because as you all here know, women, girls, people with uteruses are currently being denied the right to make healthcare decisions about their own bodies. And without bodily autonomy, there will never be true equality. Women and girls everywhere share a common desire for freedom. The freedom to protect our health. The freedom to plan our future. The freedom to make our own choices. But right now in this country, the state you live in determines if you have any reproductive freedom. It determines if you control your own body. More than 257 million women and girls worldwide do not have access to any safe, modern form of contraceptions. We have the power to change this if we work together as global citizens. We've already proved that we can create change together. And over the last two decades, maternal mortality rates have dropped by a third. But that progress has stalled and in some areas, it has even reversed. The denial of your sexual and reproductive health is a violation of your human rights. It cannot be tolerated. We must demand stronger and better resourced health systems, and we must demand them now. UNFPA, the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency, plays a vital role in empowering women globally by providing them with access to contraception. With enough funding, UNFPA supplies could prevent 24 million unplanned pregnancies, more than 6 million unsafe abortions, and over 500,000 maternal and child deaths in the next three years. Global citizens, you have been taking action with us to call on world leaders and change makers to fill UNFPA's funding gap. You called for new commitments from governments, from the private sector, and philanthropists. And one leader has responded 